In today's video, we're taking a look at a curious property of water. How well can you really mix it up if you don't have any air in the mix? A while back, I saw a comment online. Someone was wondering whether water in a perfectly full container, meaning with no air bubbles in it, would mix if two different liquids were in there or if you were to add a bit of color. If you do this without making sure there's no air in there, it mixes great. Here's the basic idea. We're going to try a short experiment to see how well you can mix water by shaking it if there's no air involved. Will the non-compressible nature of water make it so we can't mix it? You wanna fill that up most of the way with water. Just got this weird syringe and some water that's been dyed dark blue. We're just gonna try and calmly let this water settle a little. We don't want it flowing and moving around. Bled out a little more than I wanted, but that's okay. Now I'm just gonna slowly syringe out a little bit of this very blue water. There you go. You can see that's just kind of floating in the middle of the bottle. It's kind of chills, yeah. And we can see that the water, like a fish. it had not settled down quite all the way because it is still spinning. It does look like a goldfish or a betta fish. It's so pretty. All right. And now I'm just going to shake this up and down once and we're going to see what happens to this. It's and gone. It's gone. <laughs> it's all mixed in. If you filled that all the way and like all, all the way. So there was no air in it whatsoever just liquid all the way up to the very top of the cap, would you still get that result? Let's find out. So here's what we're gonna try. We're gonna hold it under the water, get it all the way full, as full as we can, then probably just leaving it in the bucket. Mm -hmm. I can't fill that halfway and like come in and top this one off because it's not all the way up right now. Problem right now is I'm absolutely seeing these little air bubbles, but I don't have the pressure to get them out. So I'm just twisting and tapping, twisting, tapping, twisting, tapping, and getting them all to rise up. All right, so that's, mostly full and yeah we just want to try and encourage all the little bubbles to float up out of the water not stick to the sides just have as little water in it as possible i want to leave this underwater and even screw the cap on underwater so i'm just going to hold it here i think it'll work pretty well all right i think we've got that bottle of water sealed with as little air in it as we can realistically hope for there you go so now you can see we've got that beautiful blue stripe sort of running through the bottle. Let's give this a shake before it just dissolves away too much. Same way that you did it with the last one, just yep. one shake up one and down. One shake up and down. Try not to smash the light. <laughs> Nothing. Virtually unchanged. There is clearly some movement going on inside the bottle, but not a ton. I'm gonna shake it several times and see where it goes. <laughs> well? There is some that's dissolved in. The water overall kind of has a slight blue tint to it, but it's not going all right. I'm gonna try a side-to-side -side shaking and see if that does it. That seems to have done it. Now I don't see any clear streaks of blue. We just have blue water with nothing left. So we're getting some interesting data here. This is why I wanted to try this experiment. I saw the comment, saw people discussing whether anything would go anywhere. And it seemed kind of like that debate about like, if an airplane tries to take off on a treadmill, where there are some people saying like, oh, it's like this. And some people are saying like, no, of course it's not like that. Don't be silly. That's nowhere near the truth. So that's why I wanted to try this. And so far, I'm very excited for the results. I want to scale it up <laughs> and use the bigger bottle. I like it. Um, I don't know if this is going to fit in there vertically. Don't, I don't think so. At least not vertically, but I think injecting the water and then tipping it till it fills, putting the cap on, is still going to give us our best full results. I think so. I'm very impressed. I'm not really sure where this idea came from, but it makes it very, very easy for us to get any color directly into the middle of the bottle without contaminating anything else. This is actually very cool. You are drawing through water, and this is amazing. You want to try and give this a vertical shake? I can certainly try. <laughs> well? Didn't really go anywhere. It's not much more than where we started. But as Nate said in previous videos, water is non-compressible. So without any air, without anything else in that bottle, there's really nowhere for it to go. It can't mix properly.
So we tried the shaking up and down. Now I want to try spinning this because we saw that could mix it, but I accidentally did this a little bit and it looked really cool. I really like that. So Vortex is down to the bottom. It's kind of hard to see, but like the outside is moving fast and starting to mix. And the stuff that's in the very center is still just kind of keeping its shape until the speed eventually catches up with it. Destin on Smarter Every Day, he had a really cool video about laminar flow motion. He recreated a device that lets you turn a handle and what he used was something thick. It might have been corn syrup. And they injected color down into it, spun it around several times, but because of the liquid they were using is so thick, it didn't actually mix together. It just looked mixed. But then when they twisted it back the other way, it unmixed beautifully. And you had those spots again. It was trippy and awesome. It was amazing. You should definitely go check that video out. So what we're doing, we are using water. It is going to mix, but we want to try the multiple colors and see how it holds up to the shake test and then spinning just because we think it's fun. Yeah. We've got some more concentrated color here and the food coloring we used was actually a gel, a very thin gel, but a gel. So we're not quite sure how this stuff is going to react. It might be a little bit different. That's okay. So the gel is staying together even more than our water dye was. And we diluted it too. It's not pure. That's gorgeous. Our last color is yellow. And if you've ever used yellow food coloring, it has a hard time being yellow until it gets really diluted. So it might look slightly off color. Over here, it looks like you have a sunset happening in the water. Just the red and the yellow in the water. Uh -huh. Well, that is really neat. Did it move? No, not really. Didn't even think about it. No, no, still just chilling. All right, I'm Goodness. gonna spin it now. All right, go for it. Okay, that was awesome. And it very quickly is becoming a dirt colored tornado of water. I don't think we can spin it back the other way to reverse it quite like Smarter Every Day did. Unfortunately, we do have a fluid that does slosh around quite a bit once you get it going. But with the vertical, with the perfectly vertical movement, it doesn't really get going. It just stays in exactly the same spot. And if you just leave it, so we haven't touched the water in this except to be pulling bottles in and out. When Nate has been trying to clean out his syringe, he's been dipping it into this water. We've had some red and yellow patches that haven't mixed in here. They've just sat on one side of this little pool of water. Haven't gone anywhere. Kind of cool. Even now, I just filled this bottle yep, they're and just like the chilling. other side of the water didn't really move much. I can tell you where all the yellow spots are and the red spots. They just haven't mixed because we aren't disturbing it. That's kind of fun. So these are just highlighter ink filters. Glow intensely bright. We hit it with the black light. So this highlighter ink, that's three highlighters. And this stuff is so strong that even when you think your hands are mostly clean, this stuff just stays on for quite a while. Oh my gosh. Well, that's the coolest thing. Well guys, if you ever want to make the Northern Lights at home in a bucket, you can. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, it moves more than the gel food color. But I think that was largely because I hit the counter when yep. I came down and that was so much momentum. Maybe it is just a little bit more. Maybe my shake technique is bad. All right, let's try a spin. There we go. Oh, it really lets you see how it's mixing or isn't mixing with the glow. All right, so this time we are going to try <laughs> and use a uh, step up in shaking quality. And because we have one. Because we have one. I, there's not really a reason I think it's going to be better or worse. I just wanted to try it and see what it does. It's not even just going to shake back and forth. But, you know, if you've got a machine that just shakes things, you kind of got to try it. <laughs> hey, look at that. 
that. It's not all mixed in. Oh my. More mixing. It's not mixed all the way yet. Yeah, There's right there. There's still swirls of it that haven't evenly mixed into oh the rest my. of it. Okay, let's take it out. I want to put just a drop of gel coloring into this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, guess what, guys? You really should have some air in your paint cans, apparently. Especially in the middle, where it was yeah. it's sort of the axis that it was turned around. Like, the ends started mixing, but the middle, even though it was moving all around it, like, it, it wasn't going anywhere. Yeah, it is mixing eventually, but not nearly as quick as if you had just an air pocket in it and shook it once. Okay, it's not mixed in yet. Okay. Here it goes. <laughs> it's mixed. mixed. It's very, very mixed. All right. All the way. If you don't have an air pocket in there, water's non-compressible. It's not really going to go anywhere at first. You have to spin it. You have to do something else to get that I, liquid moving. I wish I had a precision shaking machine that would go <laughs> perfectly up and perfectly down to see if that would actually do anything to it or if it would just stay unmixed sort of indefinitely or at least as slowly as if you just dropped water in and didn't mix it at all. I don't own one of those machines. If anyone knows of what kind of machine I could use that would let me try that, I'd be interested in hearing about it. Guys, that's not all. You know we've always got more for you to see. Click that box up at the top to check out our most recent video, and we will see you in the next one. Talk to you then.